Okay, good morning everybody. Okay, we ready? <coughs> Queensland continues to face the prospect of two very significant weather events in the next five days. Uh, these are two quite different events and uh, the uh, Weather Bureau, Jim Davidson, uh, is referring to them as uh, potentially a David and a Goliath and that is uh, we are expecting uh, Tropical Cyclone Anthony to be uh, the first event that we'll experience and for it to be uh, potentially quite smaller than the second event. Uh, the cyclone warning has now been issued for Tropical Cyclone Anthony so the cyclone sirens will now be being heard. Uh, this event is likely to occur sometime between 10pm tonight and 4am tomorrow morning. So we are expecting to see Tropical Cyclone Anthony make landfall overnight tonight. It could be as early as 8 o'clock tonight but more likely after 10pm and into the early hours of uh, Monday morning. Most likely uh, place for landfall at this stage is into the Burdekin, uh, potentially around the Air Home Hill area. However, there is uh, anywhere on 50 kilometres either side of that would, needs to be on high alert. This is a system that is likely to bring with it uh, rainfall of around two to 300 uh, millimetres but could have 400 mils in parts. Uh, and we do expect this to have, while it is the smaller event, we should uh, not for one, <coughs> one minute underestimate it. Uh, this is a tropical cyclone that is expected to bring winds of 140 kilometres an hour. Winds over 120 kilometres an hour are regarded as destructive. So depending on where it makes landfall, we do expect to see some damage out of uh, tropical cyclone Anthony. We have, uh, as I said, we've issued the cyclone warning. All uh, disaster groups in the vicinity are on full alert and evacuation centres are ready and uh, are able to take people post the event should they be uh, needing shelter out of their own homes. This, uh, it's important to understand that a cyclone event is different uh, to a flood that rises slowly and isolates people. Uh, what we were looking for with the evacuation centres is that they would only be operationalised after the cyclone uh, crosses the coast and only if necessary. Uh, the advice to everybody is shelter in your own home and to take all reasonable precautions to keep your home safe. Take the outdoor furniture in, remove anything that could become a missile. Uh, so people in the uh, Burdekin area, around Townsville, Burdekin, Home Hill, Air, uh, today is a time to batten down the hatches and make sure that you and your family are safe. We are uh, continuing to uh, have very serious concerns about the second weather formation off the coast of Queensland. Uh, this formation is very large. It is likely to formally form into a tropical cyclone uh, today and be formally named today. Uh, a cyclone watch, uh, as we expect, will be issued tomorrow in relation to that event. And at this stage, uh, the current modelling has... Uh, brought forward by 12 hours the likely landfall of uh, time to Thursday morning. So we are looking at a uh, cyclone coming across the coast at this stage late tonight or early Monday morning and another uh, potentially as early as Thursday morning. The second system is a very large system. It is a, it is a very large rainfall system as well as potentially a very significant cyclone. So we are looking at not only a potential uh, damaging cyclone but uh, more very heavy rainfall which, depending on where it falls, could fall into uh, river catchments and cause further flooding beyond the cyclone. Uh, there, is, there is likely to be very significant gale force winds associated with the second event and I'll ask uh, Jim to say a little more about that in a moment. Uh, in relation to our preparedness for these two events, uh, yes, we have come through a very difficult time and our emergency resources have certainly been tested in the last couple of weeks. They have, however, I want to reassure people, had ample opportunity to uh, restore themselves and replenish their supplies. Uh, we are not battle-weary, we are battle-ready and uh, our highly trained people are well-rested and they are re ready to respond. So we'll continue to monitor these two events, uh, but uh, there is no doubt that we are certainly facing a tropical cyclone <coughs> overnight and we'll be watching the second event uh, with a great deal of concern and giving you updates whenever there is uh, further information to hand. 
Uh, just in relation to um, uh, prepar preparations in the Townsville region, uh, Abbott Point Coal Terminal has been closed. Hay Point has three boats uh, just leaving uh, this morning and it, it will then close. All Townsville ferries uh, to both Magnetic and Palm Island are now uh, ceased operations. And the Sunlander train uh, northbound uh, this morning and southbound from Cairns have been cancelled this morning. So all reasonable preparations uh, from the major transport routes are also being taken. Do you want to add something, Sir Jim? Thanks, Premier, and good morning, everyone. I'm not too sure I can add much more to what the Premier has said, actually. She's covered both systems fairly well. Um, the cyclone, cy cyclone Anthony at the moment is a Category 1, but we expect it to become a Category 2 by 2 p.m. this afternoon, and once it becomes a Category 2, it has destructive winds associated with it. Now, uh, the, the destructive winds could be up to 140 kilometres an hour, and we expect those to impinge on the coast uh, sometime after dark tonight, so any time from 7 or 8 p.m. onwards. Um, uh, the area between about Ayr and Bowen uh, could see those destructive winds. The, the uh, extent of the gale force winds with Anthony is probably no more than 100, 150 kilometres. The difference between this system and the next one uh, is such that the gales associated with the second system, uh, the extent could be several hundred kilometres, three, four hundred kilometres. So a much larger system, as the Premier said, um, more rain associated with it, and it will bring with it also a storm tide threat. So we're watching, um, of course, Anthony very closely, but we've also got, a, got our eye on the second system uh, because of, of the potential it has to cause real problems along the Queensland coast. Did you want to add anything? Um, Premier, thank you. Um, I would certainly add to the Premier's uh, words and warnings. Uh, today's the day for people in that Townsville and Burdekin area from Cardwell down to Proserpine to fine-tune their preparations, to make sure their windows are taped, to bring in those, those last necessities, those batteries we've talked about, to make sure that uh, anything that could turn into a missile is tied down. Uh, we shouldn't underestimate the power of any uh, weather event, such as Tropical uh, Cyclone Anthony, and I'd ask people to take this very seriously and to listen and monitor their radios and the media for the warnings that will come over the next 12 to 24 hours. Thank you. Mr Davison, is the second one inevitable? Um, the models... Uh, well, I wouldn't say that was the case, but the models have been absolutely consistent now for some days in, in uh, generating uh, a large uh, tropical disturbance in the Fiji's area of, area of responsibility and moving it westward towards the Queensland coast. Uh, in fact, consistent too has been the fact that syst that system has made landfall somewhere along the central Queensland coast on Thursday of this coming week. So I, I guess we have a lot more credibility in what the models are telling us when the model runs are consistent from one to the next. So it's not in, in, inevitable, but uh, there's a, a, good, a good likelihood that we'll see a, a fairly large system on the Queensland coast by Thursday. How unusual is it to get that level of consistency with all the models? Um, as time goes on, the models are becoming more sophisticated. They are getting better, enabling us to put, put more credibility into them. Um, it's quite unusual, though, to have a, a forecast this far out. I, I think the models were first picking this up four or five days ago, and we're still four or five days from landfall. So we're looking at a nine- or ten-day forecast, which is quite incredible, really, uh, considering. So... Um, it doesn't happen very often, uh, and, and I guess that's why we're taking it seriously. The, the very fact all the major models have been predicting this now for some days makes us think uh, the potential is, is quite good. Jim, how does it compare to previous cyclones in terms, that Queensland has seen in terms of its intensity? Uh, OK. Yeah, well, OK. It's, it's not so much the intensity, and, and, and I should stress that. At, at the moment, what we see is a very large system um, there's a weak correspondence between the size of the system and the intensity, but it's not a very strong one. So it, it could still come ashore if it does come ashore as a Category 2 and yet have a, uh, a large aerial impact, that, that is, um, gales and, and rain over quite a large area. But it's just too far early to make a call on what the intensity might be at landfall. I mean, now we're down the, the geography of like, where it's hitting. Is it just central Queensland? 
Okay, the second system, uh, we've put on alert all uh, communities between about uh, Cooktown and Harvey Bay. So being so far from the Queensland coast and, and quite a few days ahead, um, we're, we're playing it safe, I guess. And it's possible that anywhere between uh, those uh, towns could see part or all of this uh, new system. I mean, what we're seeing behind you is quite scary. What were your first reactions when you, you first saw that? Well, as, uh, on the one hand, these models help us to get ready and be prepared, but on the other, they certainly let us know what we might be in for, and this is a very disturbing uh, weather pattern. Uh, when I look at the satellite map, uh, we're taking it very, very seriously and making sure that we're as prepared as you could reasonably be for something of this size. Uh, in Townsville, shelters have been opened uh, predominantly for people who are either homeless uh, or who are in uh, circumstances such as caravan parks. Uh, this is, uh, but people who have uh, a home are much safer in their own home. Um, we encourage people to shelter in place. Every location that might be facing this possibility does have evacuation centres identified. They will activate them when they know exactly where it's fallen and what the implications are. So. Uh, there is in Townsville some people staying in a shelter now, but these are people who, as I said, are either um, homeless and you don't want people in that, you don't want people living in the parks when something like this hits, uh, or who are in um, very temporary combination, combinations such as caravan parks. Well, you say battle ready, not battle weary. Is there a precedent for emergency services in Queensland dealing with two systems of, of this size coming ashore in this period of time? Uh, I might ask Jim to um, answer that in terms of the history of it, but certainly not in my living memory. <laughs> I think the last time this happened was several years ago, in 2006, when Cyclone Lowry crossed the coast. We had another cyclone following behind it at that stage, just three, three days or so behind it. And very fortunately for Queensland, the second cyclone dipped southwards and went down uh, across the Tasman Sea. Um, but at that time, the models were telling us that cyclone would move across the Tasman Sea and not impact Queensland. The difference this time around is the models are telling us that that new system will continue to move west towards the Queensland coast. Premier, if uh, infrastructure is damaged by these two cyclones, would you foresee that perhaps money from the flood levy would be then used... Uh, to pay for that, some of that reconstruction? Uh, look, clearly we don't know what uh, is likely to be the outcome of these two events. Uh, we will uh, do what we always do, and that is respond to them and the, prepare for them first, then respond to them and make sure that we can keep as many people as safe as possible, uh, and then we will look at what the recovery, if any, and what its implications are and how we'll fund it. I just think it's a bit too early to be speculating about damage when we don't even know if that will occur. Is there still some money left over from the cycle? Uh, let me deal with Cyclone Larry uh, appeal. There are what I regard to be very irresponsible reports this morning that there is uh, funds that were denied people in Cyclone Larry. This is absolutely untrue. Firstly, every single dollar that was donated to the Cyclone Larry appeal has gone to a victim of Cyclone Larry. In addition to the donated funds... Remember, there was some $21.8 million, $21 million donated. Uh, there was some interest accrued because it was in a bank account and you expect the interest to accrue. Uh, some of that interest was then spent on helping fix community organisations such as the rebuilding of a CWA hall. There are some funds remaining out of that interest, uh, some $700,000. That money cannot be transferred until all claims have been settled and there is one outstanding claim that is the subject of a dispute between the owner of the home and the builder. When that has, and we have a contingency for that uh, outcome. When that is settled, we will look to uh, uh, reallocate those funds. But can I say a couple of things? One, every single eligible claim in the Cyclone Larry Fund was paid, and every single dollar that was donated was paid to a victim of Cyclone Larry. There is some remaining interest funds, uh, which even after the the, uh, the fund uh, paid every single victim. They still had some money. So what they did was uh, go and rebuild some of the community facilities that had been damaged, including, as I said, a CWA hall and, I, I've, as my memory, it was a bowls club. Uh, after that, there was some, some remaining interest funds. And as a report that was uh, made public in August last year outlined, any remaining funds would be reallocated 
to future disaster appeals, and that's what's going to happen. But it can't transfer until all legal claims against it are finalised, and that has yet to happen. John Paul Langbrook says you've been sitting on that money. Are you sitting on it? Any suggestion that uh, there is money sitting idle that could be helping people is utterly without foundation and is an irresponsible and false claim. We have thousands of Queenslanders right now who are in pain, who are hurting, who need the appeal funds and who need people to have confidence in donating. Stories this morning about money sitting idle after Cyclone Larry is completely and utterly wrong. And I'm very, very distressed to see anybody uh, put any doubt in people's minds about donating to these sorts of appeals. This dispute between the owner and the builder, does that mean the ability to transfer it is outside your control? You or cannot... the control of the people who manage them? That's right. You cannot wind up the trust fund uh, legally until all claims against it are finalised. So that uh, we expect to happen within a couple of weeks. But let's be clear, these things take years. The people who have had their lives torn apart cannot be expected, and I don't expect them, to be able to make the best decision for themselves and their families immediately in every case. And we learnt that in Cyclone Larry. People needed time to decide whether they were going to rebuild in Innisfail or whether they were going to move. And we will give people that time if they need it. The last claims against Cyclone Larry were finalised in December last year. That's how long it took for some people. Uh, and so the $700,000, that is accruing interest uh, that cannot legally be transferred at this point because of that building dispute, is accruing interest. It is not idle. It is making money that will then be used for victims of uh, this terrible flood event. Those kind of rollovers happened before where you've had donations and then rolled over into another disaster. Uh, look, I don't know. I'm happy to have a look for you. But uh, ultimately what happened in Cyclone Larry was... Uh, People were very touched by the circumstances they saw in Innisfail and we ended up with slightly more money uh, than we needed to repair people's lives and get them back on their feet. And that money was interest, not donations. Uh, and what will that money go to? It will go to current flood victims and they will need every cent. Are you worried that this could turn people off still giving to the flood appeal? I just say to everybody, uh, particularly those who might be going to make a donation at the cricket today or through any other event that's being held around Australia... Our government has a strong track record of making sure that every person who has an eligible claim gets paid and every donation is used to help people, and that's what we will do. Don't let irresponsible media reports uh, undermine your confidence and your generosity. People here in Queensland still need your help. I was in the Lockyer Valley yesterday, uh, and I can tell you that there are people there whose lives will take years to get back on track. Money will make a big difference, but we're going to have to continue to look after people for a long time. So please don't let your confidence in this be, be uh, undermined by what I regard as seriously irresponsible media reports. Where does the appeal stand at now, Premier? The appeal is around the $186 million mark, uh, and I'm very pleased that uh, Cricket Australia today will be uh, making a very big effort through the One Day International at the Gabba uh, to bu build on that, uh, that base. Uh, I certainly want to see us see these numbers climb. We've got a number of big events that will generate more funds and we need them. This event has affected thousands of people. It is of a magnitude uh, <coughs> way beyond Cyclone Larry and way beyond anything that any state of Australia has had to deal with in terms of the number of houses and the number of lives that have been affected. So we still need your help, Australia. <coughs> we thank you for your generosity to date, but Queensland still needs your help. What do you say to Tony Abbott and to any other federal MPs who might be thinking of voting against the federal levy? There, it is just impossible for any one level of government to overcome the scale and dimension of this disaster. We need the federal government to fund their share. And if they need to do a small levy for a brief period of time, uh, then we should back them, frankly. Uh, I'm very disappointed that Tony Abbott doesn't think that Queenslanders are worth uh, making this contribution because I think uh, Queenslanders are worth every cent and I think it's important to every Australian that Queensland gets back on their feet as quickly as we can. If there's fat in the budget, though, why not get it from there? Well, there's no fat in the budget. Look, I'm not here to comment on the federal budget. Uh, my view is that we need every level of government uh, all working together. Uh, and frankly, this is a time when I would have thought some bipartisan support at every level of government uh, would help us get through this disaster. So, would you like to see maybe a disaster relief fund Queensland wide permanent? 
Look, we'll have a look what we learn out of this disaster. I would have thought something like that, frankly, would be better done on a national basis, uh, and I understand there's likely to be some discussions about it. Uh, but right now we don't have one of those. So we've got to deal with what we've got. And what we've got is an appeal fund, which I thank the generosity of Australians for. That appeal fund will go to help people do the absolute basics, buy a new bed for their son or daughter, get a washing machine, replace some of the absolute basics of life. What the uh, Commonwealth funds, the state funds and local government funds do is rebuild roads, rebuild bridges, rebuild railways. The rest of Australia, if they want to see reasonable prices for their beef, their fruit, their vegetables that come out of Queensland, we need those export chains rebuilt and operating as quickly as we can. Would you support a uh, fund? Some of the independent MPs have obviously talked about establishing a fund, a permanent fund, uh, for disaster relief. Would you, is that something you personally support? Look, I think, it would be, I think it's really important that we have a look at these sorts of options. I'd want to see what it cost and what the benefits would be before I make a final view on it. But it's hard to look at a disaster of this scale and uh, see the people who are devastated by news from their insurance companies that they may not be covered after thinking for 30 years that they were and not reach the conclusion that a country like Australia couldn't do it better in the future. Do you think the gods have got something against Queensland? Thanks for the uh, as we contemplate what might lie ahead in the next week, it would be easy, I think, to think that somebody up there's got a grudge against us. But, uh, frankly, this is just what the weather in a tropical state does uh, from time to time, and we have to be ready to cope for it. And what we've seen in the last few weeks is an emergency service response that I think is world-class, uh, and it's one that people can have confidence in and rely on in the, weeks, uh, in the week ahead. Is it, sorry, is it too early for you to cancel community cabinet up there next week? Look, I, I will be obviously watching that very carefully. Uh, depending on where this second event uh, lies, we may have to think about that. But if it doesn't fall in that area, I'd be loath to, uh, to cancel bookings and, uh, and you know, diminish some contribution to their local economy. So uh, we'll just play that by ear.